In this video, I'll show you some tools and supplies you need to paint in oils or acrylics. If you're curious about what you'll need to get started, stay tuned because I'll share with you some tips and tricks on how to save money, where you can cut corners, and where quality really counts. Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm Naomi and I paint for a living. You can check out my work on TerrySalgado.com. My goal for this channel is to not just have you copy me as I paint, but to teach you the underlying concepts of art so that you can have the confidence to start your own painting practice. So I paint in oil myself and I'll be teaching you how to paint in oil. But most of the exercises and projects can be converted to acrylic if that's what you have at the house or that's what you're comfortable with. So let's talk about paint quality. When you go to the store and you look down that aisle, you'll see millions of tubes of paint and it can be intimidating. So let's break it down and make it easy for you. There are basically three levels of paint in the acrylic world. In the oil world, there's two levels of paint. So in the acrylic world, there's this bottom level, which is craft paint. This is usually like a dollar a bottle, not archival at all. I wouldn't recommend using it. If this is your only way of being able to paint, then definitely use it because it's better to paint than not paint. There are two levels that look like artist paint, but this one would be a student grade paint and this would be professional artist level grade paint. Two things that paint companies do to save money. One, they reduce the pigment load inside the paint. So there's less pigment balls inside, floating around inside that binder. And sometimes they add filler in order to put in less pigment. Other way is they might try to switch out that pigment for a different one that looks similar. And they will tell you when they do that by putting on the name Hue, H-U-E. Hue means that they took a pigment that looks similar to that and put it in its place. In the color straight out of the tube, it looks identical, but when you start mixing them, they will act differently. Student grade, it's okay to get started. It's okay if this is what you can afford, but after a while, you'll figure out that your colors just aren't quite as bright, and at that point, that's when you know it's time to upgrade to your professional quality paint. I'm all about saving money every which way you can, but when it comes to paint quality, one place where I feel like spending a little more is worth it. That's where quality really counts. So for your shopping list of colors, let's start here on the yellow end. This is a yellow that tends towards green. This is called cadmium lemon. You can also get Hansa yellow, H-A-N-S-A -S yellow. For the yellow that tends towards orange, you'd wanna get cadmium yellow. This could either come cadmium yellow medium or cadmium yellow deep. Then for the red, cadmium red or cadmium red light. Another one that works for that would be naphthol scarlet. For the red that tends towards the violet, I would recommend quinacridone magenta. You can also use alizarin crimson. The reason I don't recommend alizarin crimson right off the bat is that it can be fugitive if you don't get a, a permanent one. So make sure you find a permanent one if you're going the alizarin route. For the blue that tends towards the violet side, I'd recommend ultramarine blue or French ultramarine blue. For the blue that tends towards the green side, you can get cerulean blue. Another option would be phthalo blue. Then you will want titanium white. I've been looking for a set of split primaries. In case you don't have any paint at home right now, you can just order this one set and you're all done. I found them at several different art sites online, but they're all tend to be sold out. Um, however, I found one in stock and on top of it, it's a super easy set. These paints are made by Michael Wilcox the author of the book we're using. And this one says violet red, and it also says on the same tube quinacridone violet, which is the pigment color. This one says violet blue and ultramarine blue. And so the label makes them very easy to see where they fall around the color wheel.
Now, I consider these paints to be extremely high quality. Even though they're labeled as easy use for beginners, the paint itself is professional grade, so you get to really see the full range of mixing potential. Um, there's no fillers other than need for consistency or um, drying time or things like that, so it's high pigment load and no hues used. It's the true pigment and the light fastness is either one or two for them. These are just the scales on the ASTM standard, which is the standard for oil paint here in the U.S. If you're interested in this set of paint, there's a 5% off coupon with the link in the description below. Um, don't feel like you have to get this set of paint. It's just the easy button. But if you have some tubes of paint at home already, maybe it makes sense to just fill in what other colors you need to make up that set. Again, keep it simple, keep it affordable, right? Let's get painting. You only need three brushes. Like a wide one like this, flat, wide, a medium-sized one, and a small, thin one for detail. These three, you will get by just fine. You can always accumulate more as you keep going along, but these would be a great way to get started. These are all made out of hog's hair. This is a synthetic brush, and so it ha it's very stiff, and it will also work great. This sable one is very fluffy, and this will not work as good. This is more a good one for watercolor. Now let's talk about what to paint on. You can paint on many different surfaces. The thing you have to watch for is what primer they use on it. Most things are primed with acrylic primer, which is also sometimes called universal primer. And that works on everything as universal means. And when you go to paint on top of a oil primed canvas, you need to use oil paint. If you use acrylic, it will slide right off. Here are three different options that I've you can easily get at the art store. Stretched canvas, canvas on a panel, it's like a board already, and this is a canvas pad. It's real canvas that has been already primed, ready to go, and it comes in big sheets. You can cut them apart. This, you do need to tape to a board to make it easy to use. Or you can, I guess you can leave it right in the pad and paint right on it, but typically an artist will tape around all four edges down to a board and then that can go in your easel or get moved around on your table. Um, this is probably the most affordable option and I highly recommend it when you're beginning. Not only is it affordable, it's easy to store. This is a little bit more expensive and a little thicker to store but it's also very convenient because you don't need to tape it to a board. It's already got a board built in. And this is maybe the most expensive and also most difficult to store. When it comes to an easel, I'm actually gonna recommend that you actually don't get one unless you have one already. If you do feel like you need one, buy a very cheap, affordable one. This one is probably like 20 bucks or something like that. It has an adjustable thing. It sits on the table, and when you're done with it, it folds up really small. This is what I would recommend to start with until you know what exactly you want. I have spent way too much money buying an easel that I thought I wanted, but I didn't do all my homework first, and in the end, I, I kind of wasted that money. So I would just recommend painting, just lay your canvas flat on the table for now, or invest in this $20 little jobby until you really know what you'd like. Palettes are what you use to mix your paint on. There's many, many options for palettes. The first question to ask is, are you gonna use oil paint or acrylic paint? And the second question to ask is, do you wanna save your paint or do you wanna just throw away your paint after you're done? If you're going to use oil paint, you could either use this disposable palette it's basically waxed paper all put in a pad and you can just squirt out your colors on the top, mix all over this pad in the bottom, and then at the end of your paint session, you can throw it all away. And you're ready for the next day. Very convenient. This was my very first palette, otherwise known as a cake pan. How I use this palette is I flip it upside down, a roll of wax paper, I make it so that it goes all the way around and I tape it to the inside. 
Okay, so you're covered with wax paper. You can do the very same thing. Pour out your paint and then mix on the bottom. At the end of your session, however, you can lift off the paper, put it on the inside, put the lid on it, and it will stay wet. If it's oil paint, you can put it in the freezer and it will stay wet for months. If it's acrylic paint, you can mist it with a little bit of water and leave it just in your studio with the cover on tight and it should probably stay wet till the next day. If you're going to use acrylic paint and you want to save it, my recommendation is that you invest in this. It's called a Masterson Stay Wet Palette. It will come with a sponge and palette paper. So you put the sponge in the bottom, make it damp, like a little bit of water, and then cover it with this palette paper. And then you mix on the palette paper and you keep your paints on the palette paper. And this paint will stay wet for several weeks actually because this lid keeps the water in. And Some other palettes that you can use would be a paper plate that has that waxy stuff on it or a styrofoam plate type thing. Um, you can use a tray. Any kind of a flat surface will work great. And if it has a lid, it is a bonus. While we're on the topic of palettes, this is a palette knife. And I highly recommend a palette knife. Um, it is a good tool to mix paint, to clean your palette, and I actually even paint with it. However, it's not a necessary tool right away. Hope you're finding value in this video. If you are, please give it a like. So the last thing you'll need before you're ready to go is some way to clean your brushes. If you're using acrylic paints, you can just grab some kind of plastic thing out of your recycling container, fill it with water, and you can just rinse your brushes right in there. With acrylic paint you want to make sure that you wash your brushes very often. If Once that paint hardens and dries on there it's really hard to get it out and it can ruin your brushes. If you're painting with oil paint you do have more time before you need to wash those brushes. In fact you could wrap them in plastic wrap and stick them in the freezer if you're going to paint with them tomorrow. However if you get ready to clean them you need to cut the oil the products used typically are Gamsol. This is made by Gamblin. And this is Turpinoid. It's made by Weber. They both are odorless mineral spirits. Most of the toxin has been extracted out. They still are slightly toxic to where you have to be a little careful. So what, what I like to do is just keep it in a jar like this with a watertight lid and then only take the lid off when it's time to clean the brushes and after the brushes are clean, put the lid back on. So you'll have a plastic bag handy and a roll of paper towel handy. So those are my recommendations for when you're just getting started. As you go along, of course, you'll add more to your um, setup. In the beginning, it's best to just start with a very bare bones investment. See what you like and learn as you go. So. If you have further questions, please ask them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them, and I hope you have a great day. Happy painting. Well, time to do a little editing today. And my studio assistant is busy looking for treats. He doesn't know that he, I have one right here. You wanna say something, Wadi? Hey, Wadi, can you say hi? Oops. Yes, you can. Can you say hi? Say hi again. Oh. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. That's his indignation because he thinks he needs the treat. Say hi. Hi. Good boy. Woohoo. Good job, Watson. Say goodbye.